Today, we're gonna recap the fantasy musical, The Lion King. Spoilers ahead. The sun rises over the African Pride Lands, as animals from all corners of the kingdom embark on a journey to Pride Rock. King Mufasa, the ruler of the Pride Lands, looks over his kingdom as Rafiki, his advisor and shaman, arrives to begin a ceremony. Mufasa nuzzles with his queen, Sarabi, who cradles their newborn child, Simba. Rafiki triumphantly raises Simba in the air on top of the rock. The animals in the kingdom cheer in celebration, bowing in honor of the new prince. A tiny mouse scurries through the wilderness, eventually encountering Scar, Mufasa's jealous and intimidating brother. Before Scar can kill the mouse, a hornbill, Zazu, interrupts, announcing the arrival of Mufasa, who's unhappy that Scar did not attend the ceremony. Scar refuses to answer to anybody and goes to eat Zazu, only to be stopped by Mufasa, who demands an answer for his brother's absence. Scar expresses his frustration at being denied his place on the throne, now that Simba has been born. Mufasa urges Scar not to turn his back on family, but Scar warns Mufasa not to turn his back on him. Scar backs down from challenging his brother for the throne, believing he got the brains while his brother got the strength. Mufasa reminds Scar that Simba will one day rule the kingdom, to which Scar says, Long live the king. Scar leaves his cave, but Mufasa refuses to expel his brother from their home, something that will never change as long as he is king. In his tree, Rafiki uses nearby bugs to craft a drawing of Simba. Sometime later, Simba is now an eager cub, desperate for adventure. He wakes up his father early in hopes that they can do things together, but Mufasa uses the moment as an opportunity to teach his son essential lessons about how to be a king. He explains that everything the light touches in the Pride Lands is for them to protect, but anything beyond is forbidden. He goes on to tell his son that every animal is connected in the circle of life, a delicate balance of life and death that a good king will respect and protect. Zazu interrupts the father-son bonding to give Mufasa the morning report. Cinema recap here. We've got a little challenge that'll take five seconds, and it will change your life forever. You ready? All you gotta do is like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and you'll receive 10 free years of good luck. It's as simple as that. With Zazu distracted, Mufasa uses the moment as an opportunity to teach Simba how to hunt. Simba successfully takes Zazu down. But the bird quickly returns to report that hyenas are hunting in the area. Mufasa orders Zazu to take Simba home to Sarabi and the other cubs. Simba fights back but reluctantly goes home. Back at Pride Rock, Zazu leaves Simba to play with the other cubs. But Simba gets distracted trying to catch a flying beetle. His failure lands him in Scar's hideout, where his uncle offers the young prince some advice. Go home. Simba tells Scar about all the things his dad showed him, musing how weird it is that he'll be the one giving Scar orders when he's king, a thought that angers Scar. When Simba shows curiosity about what lies beyond the horizon, Scar claims it's an elephant graveyard, manipulating the cub to go there against his father's wishes. Simba interrupts his best friend Nala's bath, claiming that they're going to the watering hole. But when they're about to leave, Sarabi insists that Zazu go with him, or they don't go at all. On the way, Simba reveals to Nala where they're going. Simba and Nala plot to get rid of Zazu, who muses that the pair will be married someday. Both Simba and Nala insist that will never happen. They're friends. But Zazu reminds them that it's tradition, and if Simba refuses, he'll be a terrible king. Simba announces that when he's king, he's going to change the rules and do things his way to Zazu's bemusement. With the help of other animals, Simba and Nala lose Zazu and make it to the sinister elephant graveyard unaccompanied. On the way, they fight, with Nala once again pinning Simba down with little effort. While exploring the remains, a pack of hyenas led by Shenzi, Kamari, and Azizi find the lions. Realizing that Simba is the king's son, the hyenas are ready to kill and eat him. But Zazu warns them that killing Simba would start a war with Mufasa. 
The hyenas, unfazed, attempt to kill Simba as Zazu tries to distract and hold off the hyenas long enough for the cubs to flee. Eventually, they find themselves surrounded by the pack. Simba does his best roar, but the hyenas laugh at him. A louder, stronger roar echoes when he tries again, and Mufasa leaps in to fight off the hyenas. He warns Shenzi of the consequences if the hyenas come near Simba again. Mufasa takes the cubs home, but he's upset with Simba. He orders Zazu to take Nala back to Pride Rock before expressing his disappointment in Simba for putting the future of the Pride in danger. The cub tries to justify his actions, explaining that he was trying to be brave like Mufasa. Mufasa reveals that he's only brave when he needs to be. Today, he was scared of losing his son. Simba realizes that even kings can be afraid. Mufasa and Simba look up at the stars, with Mufasa revealing that the great kings of the past are looking down on them from the skies. He tells Simba that he'll join him one day and guide Simba when he feels alone. Meanwhile, Scar arrives at the hyena hideout as the pack complains about their lack of food. Scar expresses his disappointment that the hyenas could not kill two cubs who were hand-delivered to them. He promises the hyenas an unending supply of food from the Pride Lands if they help him kill Mufasa and Simba, allowing him to take the throne. Convinced by his offer, the hyenas eagerly agree to help. The next day, Scar brings Simba to an empty gorge to teach Simba how to roar, a surefire way to impress his father. If he can master his roar, he will never be called a cub again. Scar leaves Simba to practice his roar, but this is all part of his plan. Above the gorge, the hyenas are waiting for Scar's signal. As Simba practices his roar, he notices something is wrong. The rock faces begin to crumble. The earth starts to shake. Simba looks up at the cliff to see a wildebeest stampede heading his way. The hyenas chase the wildebeest into the gorge, forcing Simba to flee for his life. The tiny cub manages to hide behind a rock. At Pride Rock, Scar tells Mufasa that Simba has gotten caught up in the stampede. Zazu and Mufasa rush to save him. With the rock destroyed, Simba climbs a tree for safety, but the rampaging wildebeest threatens to knock it down. Zazu finds the cub, assuring him that help is on the way. Mufasa rushes down to help his son, and Scar sends Zazu away to warn the pride. Mufasa braves the stampede, rescuing Simba but the king is soon carried away by the rampaging wildebeest. Simba watches as Mufasa leaps out of the fray, climbing the rock face. He reaches the top of the cliff, but can't pull himself up, asking Scar for help. The power-hungry Scar sinks his claws into Mufasa's paws, offering a sinister, long live the king, before throwing his brother to his death. Simba watches as his father falls into the stampede. In the aftermath, Simba rushes into the gorge to find his father's lifeless body. The devastated cub begs his father to wake up, but it's too late. Simba nestles himself in his father's arms as Scar arrives, convincing Simba that he is the reason Mufasa died. He claims that Simba proved to be the ultimate disappointment to his parents and his pride, encouraging Simba to run away and never return. Terrified, Simba does just that. The hyenas arrive, and Scar tells them to kill Simba. The hyenas chase the cub to a cliff top, sending him flying over the edge. Shenzi orders Kamari and Azizi to go down and make sure he's dead, but the hyenas assume that the cub couldn't possibly have survived the fall, and neither wants to make the journey to check. They make a deal to lie to Shenzi and leave, unaware that Simba survived the fall. Simba begins his journey into exile, wandering into the wilderness. At Pride Rock, Scar announces Mufasa's death to the lionesses and reveals that Simba also died. He feigns grief and sadness that he could not have stopped the incident, but takes his place as the new king of the Pride Lands. He explains that he can't handle the burden alone and announces that the hyenas will be helping to ensure the safety of the Pride. As Scar celebrates his coronation, Zazu and Rafiki watch from a distance, mourning the loss of their friends. In the desert, Simba walks alone. Exhausted, he eventually passes out. Later, a flock of vultures tries to eat Simba, 
only to be interrupted by meerkat and warthog duo Timon and Pumbaa, who scare them away. Realizing that the lion cub is alone, Timon and Pumbaa decide to adopt the cub as their own to have an intimidating and strong adult lion on their side. When Simba wakes up, he's still depressed about the death of his father, but Timon and Pumbaa introduce the cub to their life motto, Hakuna Matata. To these guys, life is all about forgetting the past, answering to nobody, and living without worry or responsibilities. To protect their friends, Timon and Pumbaa introduce Simba to the world of eating bugs. And, over time, he becomes close friends with them, adopting their carefree life philosophy as he grows into an adult cub. At the Pride Lands, wildebeests flee Scar and the hungry hyenas. Nala joins Sarabi and the lionesses as Zazu quietly gives the morning report, revealing that the hyenas have consumed almost all the food and resources in the land. The hyenas chase Zazu away as Scar arrives on Pride Rock. Nala tries to convince Sarabi to fight, but Sarabi refuses to defy tradition. Scar is the king, and they must never abandon their home. Sarabi assures Nala that their time is coming, but they must wait. Scar calls Sarabi over, bragging that he has perfected the kill. He will no longer be challenged as king. Scar demands that Sarabi be his queen, the only way to ensure that the other lions respect and accept him as the leader. But Sarabi rejects his advances, vowing never to be his queen. Scar punishes her by ensuring that the lions eat after the hyenas, meaning they get the scraps. That night, Nala sneaks out of Pride Rock while the lionesses sleep. As she evades the prowling hyenas, Zazu spots Nala, urging her to go back to sleep. Nala refuses, hiding from Scar, seemingly on the hunt for her. Zazu distracts Scar and the hyenas, allowing Nala to escape the Pride Lands unharmed. Sarabi watches her go. In the wilderness, Timon and Pumbaa explain to Simba their understanding of the circle of life, or as they call it, a meaningless line of indifference. To them, life is a line in which you can do anything with no consequence to anybody. Timon and Pumbaa ask Simba to plan what they'll be doing for the day. Simba chooses to do nothing but eat grubs, to the joy of his new friends. That night, Simba, Timon, and Pumbaa look up at the stars. While Timon and Pumbaa wonder what could be up there, Simba shares Mufasa's wisdom. The kings of the past are looking down on the kingdom. His friends laugh it off. But Simba, lost in thought, slips away to be alone. As he lays down, the wind blows some fur from his mane. Many animals carry the fur from location to location until, eventually, it reaches Rafiki. Sensing that Simba is alive and well, he returns to his drawing, updates it, and rejoices. While singing and dancing through their safe home, Timon, Pumbaa, and the other animals are attacked and chased by Nala. Before she can capture them, Simba leaps out and pounces on her. During the fight, Nala pins Simba down, leading him to the exciting realization that this is his best friend. Nala is thrilled to see that Simba is alive. Explaining that Scar has destroyed the Pride Lands, Nala urges Simba to come home and take his place as king. Simba insists that this is his new home and convinces Nala to hang out for a while. As Simba shows Nala around his new home, Timon and Pumbaa realize that the two lions are falling in love. It's only a matter of time before they lose their new carefree friend to a life of responsibility. Later, Nala asks why Simba never bothered coming home. Still feeling guilty, Simba refuses to go back home, even after hearing about the decimation of the Pride Lands. She urges him to challenge Scar, but Simba is too stubborn and fixed in his no worries mindset. Disappointed with Simba's total lack of responsibility, Nala decides to leave. In the wilderness, Simba wanders alone believing he doesn't need anybody else to be happy. In the middle of the forest, he finds Rafiki, who follows him. Simba tries to get rid of Rafiki, but the shaman won't leave until Simba knows who he is, the son of Mufasa. Rafiki reveals that Mufasa is alive and waiting for his son. Simba follows him through the woods to a small lake. Rafiki shows Simba his reflection, which turns into an image of Mufasa, and Rafiki tells Simba that his father lives in him. In the sky, Simba sees his father, 
illuminated in lightning, and hears his voice encouraging him to take his place in the circle of life as the king of the Pride Lands. Mufasa expresses his never-ending pride in having Simba as his son. He assures Simba that he'll never leave. Simba just has to remember who he is. Realizing his purpose in life, Simba runs to catch Nala. Timon and Pumbaa witness Simba roaring with newfound purpose. Simba and Nala return to the Pride Lands, now wholly decimated and destroyed. Realizing the extent of the damage, Simba and Nala vow to fight to rescue their home. Zazu arrives, thrilled to see Simba once again. Timon and Pumbaa also join, admitting that they did, in fact, have worries about their new friend. With no clear way into Pride Rock, Simba comes up with the idea to use Timon and Pumbaa as live bait to distract the hyenas and lead them away. Rafiki watches as the plan unfolds, retrieving a large stick. On Pride Rock, Scar tries once again to convince Sarabi to be his queen, but she still refuses. After she tells him that he's nothing compared to Mufasa, Scar attacks Sarabi in front of the lionesses. Simba roars to break up the fight, with Scar mistaking him for Mufasa. Announcing himself as Simba, the Pride are thrilled to see that he's alive and well. Nala announces that Simba is the true king, and the lionesses back her up. With his newfound support, Simba offers Scar a final choice, step down or fight. Scar once again turns the tables on Simba, forcing him to announce to the Pride that he was the one who killed Mufasa. Scar angrily pushes Simba to the cliff's edge, causing him to slip and hang over the edge just as Mufasa did. Below, lightning strikes a tree, starting a fire. Scar reveals to Simba that he was the one who killed Mufasa, in the exact same way. Realizing the truth, Simba angrily pounces on Scar, telling the truth to the lionesses. Scar tries to lie once again, but Sarabi finds holes in Scar's story. Unwilling to accept defeat, Scar orders his hyenas to kill the lions, beginning an all-out war between the two tribes. As Nala and Shenzi fight, Zazu and Rafiki also join to get some hits before Timon and Pumbaa arrive to join the battle. Nala throws Shenzi off the cliff, and the lions chase the hyenas away. Simba spots Scar attempting to flee and follows him. Simba finally confronts Scar at the top of a giant rock, with no way of escape. Scar attempts to blame the whole thing on the hyenas and claims he was planning to kill them, unaware that they're listening. Scar begs Simba for mercy, and Simba agrees, ordering Scar to run and never come back. Scar accepts, only to throw hot embers in Simba's face. The two fight until Simba knocks Scar off the cliff and into the flames, but Scar manages to survive, only to see the hyenas coming for him. As he tries to win them back, the hyenas reveal they heard him throwing them under the bus and kill him. That night, the falling rain washes the fire out. With the hyenas gone, the lionesses return to Pride Rock as Simba finally ascends to his throne. Mufasa's voice encourages Simba to remember. He reaches the edge of the cliff and lets out a stunning roar, officially becoming the Lion King. Sometime later, the Pride Lands have returned to their bright and natural glory. Timon, Pumbaa, and their friends have moved in. Animals from all across the land arrive in celebration as Nala joins Simba on top of Pride Rock. Rafiki makes his way to the edge, presenting the king's newest cub, Kiara, to the animal kingdom, ensuring that the circle of life will continue.